Welcome to game theory. This is section 24, normal form of general games. So let's first out start off with the definition of the word strategy. So strategy in a general game is to look for the longest possible time horizon for the de decision tree. So this is important because when you're looking for a strategy for a game, you'd like to know the best possible move combination for the longest possible point in the game. So what we're looking for now is a method of condensing the game tree information into a tabular form, namely into the normal form. So let's look at a method of reducing pure strategy. So let's look at a game of two round chicken, where here P represents passive behavior in the game of chicken and G represents aggressive behavior. So this is a simultaneous game. Players A and players B both have to make a decision at the same time whether or not to be passive or aggressive. So here we see on the left, we have a game tree indicated with player A and player B. Player B has an information set uh, because they don't know what player A will be choosing, either passive or aggressive. If both players choose to be aggressive, then the game plays again, and both players again have the choice to be either passive or aggressive. Um, if both players are aggressive again, we have a very negative payoff here. And so what we can do here is we can list the strategies for player A and player B. So player A can choose to be passive in the first round and then can choose to be aggressive in the second round, can choose to be passive and then passive, or can choose to be aggressive, then passive, or aggressive, then aggressive. And player B has the same choices as player A in this game. And so here we've indicated as this is our round one choice, and this is our round two choice. And these are our strategies for each player. And so our strategies are notated, we can indicate where the number of spots indicates the number of turns for that player, and the entry in the spot is the choice at that turn. Now notice based on the game tree, if player A is passive, then these both these entries result in the end of the game, namely that the game tree will go up into this upper branch and player there will never be a second turn. So we can indicate this as passive with a dot at the end. And this dot here indicates that the second turn, this turn here, doesn't matter. That choices at this turn don't affect the outcome. And in the same way here, if player B chooses passive, then the game does not continue either. So passive with the dot indicates that if either player chooses passive on their first turn, then the game does not progress to the second round. So we can list player A and player B's strategies as passive with a dot, so indicating they play passive first. They can play aggressive than passive or they can play aggressive than aggressive, similar with player B. Since we've reduced the strategies down from four strategies to three strategies, these are called the reduced pure strategies. Pure strategies being as we don't change the strategies in between the games. We don't change up or mix up our strategies. We'll be discussing mixed strategies in the next section. So let's look at this game again here. So with this payoff, with our extensive form, we have our combination of payoffs. So if both players are passive, we get a payoff of zero. So we go along this upper branch. If A is passive and B is aggressive, well, let's complete this first. If both players are passive on this first turn, notice that we have this full block where both players are passive on this first turn, indicating that they would get zero as their payoff. If A was passive and B was aggressive on their first turn, then A loses and B gains. If B was passive and A was aggressive. Let's finish out this. Then A gains and B loses. And so we see we have another sort of block behavior here. 
and then if a is aggressive and b is aggressive they move to the second round so the second round of chicken is in this lower quadrant if they're both passive then we get a payoff of zero zero we have passive versus aggressive we have negative one one and if we have aggressive versus passive we have one negative one aggressive aggressive is negative 10 negative 10. so in this bottom block here this is the second round of chicken but notice to get to the second round both players had to play aggressive on their first round so we can reduce some of these strategies down because this contains more information than we need. And so if we contain down the passive, we reduce down that block of passive information. We say that there is our first block, and then this is our second block, our division in the two blocks here. And we have the same sort of structure as before. And this makes it much easier to find our Nash equilibrium because we don't have as many points to consider. And this is what we call the reduced normal form. Now let's look at an example. So given a game, let's find the Nash equilibrium here. So let's suppose the payoff here is given A has moves A1 or A2. If A chooses A1, the game is over with the payoff of zero two. If A chooses move A2, then B has a turn with moves B1 or B2, and it becomes a simultaneous game where B chooses B1, B2 simultaneously while A has an information set indicating they don't know what B chooses, and A can choose moves A3 or A4 with payoffs. So A has move choices A1 or A2. So if A chooses A1, then there's no second turn. A could choose A2, and then could choose A3, or could choose A2, then A4. So remember, we have two sort of turns. If we think about it in terms of what our first move, round one, and what our second round choice would be. If A1 is chosen, then there is no second round. And B only has two moves here, B1 or B2. Those are the only strategies that B can choose to play here. So in our reduced normal form, we can place A1 strategies along the rows, A1 dot, A2, A3, A2, A4, and then B along the column, B1, B2. So if A plays A1, the payoff for either B1 or B2 is 0, 2. If A plays A2 and B plays B1 and A plays A3, we get a payoff of 3, 1. If A plays A2, B plays B1 and A plays A4, we get 1, negative 2. A plays A2, B plays B2 and A plays A3, negative 2, negative 1, and then negative 3 negative one as our final point. So analyzing this matrix reduced normal form for our Nash equilibrium, we see that if we look, if A was to choose its first strategy, B's best response would be either move. B doesn't have a best response. There's no distinguishing B's moves in this case. If A chooses to play the second strategy, B's best response would be play B1. If A would to choose the third strategy, B's best response would be to play B2. If B was to choose to play B1, A's best response is the second strategy, and B chooses to play B2, A's best response is to play the first strategy. So using our Nash equilibrium analysis, we see that we in fact have two Nash equilibrium for this game. So we have a Nash equilibrium at A1 dot comma B2 and at A2, A3 comma B1. So this is with payoff 
first Nash equilibrium is with payoff 0, 2. And the second equilibrium, Nash equilibrium, has payoff 3, 1. And often the question becomes, which makes this Nash equilibrium the best? Which would be a better Nash equilibrium for A to choose, the payoff with 0, 2 or the payoff for 3, 1? And this is where we get into the idea of subgame perfect Nash equilibrium. So with subgame perfect Nash equilibrium, if we have a normal form, a Nash equilibrium is considered to be the best if it is what we call subgame perfect. So a subgame is where we call, where we consider a snip in the game tree, where we take the game tree and divide it into smaller disjoint games. Now a subgame perfect Nash equilibrium is where every Nash equilibrium is also a Nash equilibrium in each subspace. Oh, excuse me, in each subgame. So to find a subgame perfect Nash equilibrium, we start with the subgames closest to the end of the game, find the Nash equilibrium of these subgames, replace each subgames with the Nash equilibrium payoff, and if there are more than one Nash equilibrium, repeat with the new subgames. And we continue this process until we find a Nash equilibrium of the entire game. So let's look back at our example. So if we take the example beforehand, we have two sort of subgames. We have the simultaneous game on the left here. We start at the end on the far right, and we snip it at the end of the at the beginning of the simultaneous game. So indicated would B starts its turn. So this subgame is indicated here. And when we look at the subgame with its payoffs, we can find its Nash equilibrium here. So if B if A plays A3, B would choose here. If A plays A4, B would choose here. B plays B1, A would choose this. If B plays B2, A would choose this. So we have one subgame, so one Nash equilibrium at A3, comma B1 with payoff of 3, 1. So we can return to our game tree and we can indicate that with a triangle, indicating that we've taken our subgame and we've reduced it down to our Nash equilibrium. And so if we were to solve that game with a Nash equilibrium point, we would bring it down and we'd find 3, 1. So now when we're looking at this game, if A has a choice between A1 or A2, and the payoffs were 0, 2, or 3, 1, we know that A would choose A2 as a move because A is rational, so A would get payoff, final payoff of 3, 1. So even though the game would be over faster if A chose A1, A would choose A2 as a move. So if you have any questions, as always, feel free to let me know.